Everyone, Scott Jansen here. As you well know, uh, my past hypnotherapy business was helping lawyers quit smoking. And I got a question recently, which was, what are the most common things I use to become, you know, fairly well, uh, fairly good, sorry, at uh, being a stop smoke therapist for lawyers. So I thought I'd make a video and show you my top 11 steps if you are working with the stop smoking niche and you want to become an expert in it. And it's very, very simple. So Let's look at these. Let's break them down now. I'll give you a bit of an example of all these 11 steps. Get a notepad and pen, guys. Write this stuff down. And even if you're brand new to hypnosis and you want to focus on the niche of stop smoking, these will help a lot. And the first one is the most important step, guys. Please pay attention. Is put your phone down. Put the pen down for now. Please focus on the very first step I'm about to give you because it will solve the majority of the teething problems that therapists have working with people that want to quit smoking, cigars, vaping, all of that sort of stuff. Number one. Smoking is a symptom. If you can remember this, you'll never have a problem helping someone quit smoking again. You have to remember this. Believe it or not, guys, it's the same for weight loss. It's the same for anxiety. It's the same for fears. It's the same for phobias, whatever it is. It is all a symptom. I have a lot of people tell me they don't like doing stop smoking sessions. And I say, great, you're never ever going to do one anyway. Your client will tell you they want to quit, but this is a conclusion. This is a symptom. So if you're worried about doing stop smoking, don't worry. You never have to do a stop smoking session again. I even know mentors that say you shouldn't use this version of hypnosis for stop smoking because stop smoking is hard. That is based on their thoughts and their lack of ability to actually help someone quit smoking. And it's because they do believe that smoking is the problem. If you go into a session believing smoking is the problem, you've already screwed it up. If you go into a session believing that weight issues are the problem, anxiety is the problem, you have already screwed it up. Smoking is a symptom, guys. That's number one. Remember that. Number two, then people say you need to do pre-tasking. Like I've got to send my client around for a whole week and pick up cigarette butts and put them in a jar to show they're motivated. This is a symptom. There is nothing your client needs to do before the stop smoking session because it's not a stop smoking session. Remember that. It's all a symptom. I've got to have the right stop smoking script and techniques. How can you have a stop smoking script that has... Stop smoking hypnosis script at the top. And it has suggestions like you're a non-smoker. You can breathe easily. Every time you think about cigarettes, you'll have a nauseating feeling in your stomach. All of these sorts of things, which is basically telling a client you're a non-smoker. You can't have that because you're treating the symptom. And also don't need stop smoking techniques. You ever go to a course or see a course that says, you know, come and learn my stop smoking uh, technique course to learn how to be an expert, stop smoking hypnosis therapist, whatever it is laugh go the other way spend your money somewhere else because they are essentially saying i'm going to show you how to help someone quit smoking it is not the smoking you're helping it's the root cause we all know this smoking is a symptom so you can't have stop smoking script and stop smoking techniques in the same place as remembering that all problems exist in the unconscious mind those two things clash and that's therapy 101 we know this it is all a symptom guys number four I have to do multiple sessions because it's an addiction. Smoking is a symptom. Now, I do want to point this out. With some problems, smoking could be one of them, but with heavier problems like drug addiction, alcoholism, you definitely want to make sure that you have things in place that if a client stops cold turkey, they don't go into a shock and cause a lot of medical issues, even to the point of some people dying. Okay. If you want to work out what those things are, especially around outside of smoking, like uh, drugs and alcoholism, I suggest go speak to a doctor or a nurse and realize you may not even be qualified to do these things. And I definitely wouldn't put uh, myself in those places. That's why I never work with uh, drug addicts or uh, alcoholism because I knew the, the after effects of helping someone quit. You know, the body goes through cold turkey, goes through shock, could kill the person, all those morbid things. Go speak to a doctor or nurse and find out what things you have to have in place. Or, like I tell most of my students, just ignore it altogether unless you've got previous practice or some sort of skill set like you're a nurse or a doctor yourself that can help with these things, guys, and get very, very dangerous. When it comes to smoking, it is a symptom. Okay, guys, just remember that. You've got to give an audio for 30 days. Smoking is a symptom. Giving away the audio is the worst example of bad hypnosis training you could go to. Why? Because if my client solves the problem in the session, why do I need an audio? Now, I'm not going to get into the processing chat, which I've talked about before and why that interrupts the processing chat, but fix the problem in the session. A lot of people will say that I help 50% of the problem in the session, and then the 30 days takes care of the addiction, 30 days of the audio takes care of the habit, all of these sorts of things. What you're saying indirectly is smoking is the problem. If I get rid of the root cause, I don't need to have 
the 30 day audio because all I'm going to do is just reintroduce new ideas about what the symptom was and it becomes ridiculous. Plus clients that listen to it anyway, it doesn't work in your benefit as a hypnotherapist guys. And I've talked about this at nausea. People are probably sick of me saying this, but audios are not necessary. They do not work. They do more harm than good guys. But again, smoking is a symptom. You start the session in the same way. You do a strategy call with the client. They say, Scott, I want to quit smoking. Cool. Client sits down a day later in front of me over Zoom or something. I go, great. What's the problem you want to work on? Sure. I'm almost repeating myself there, but client says, Scott, I want to quit smoking. Great. Let's start there. I want to start where my client is in their mind and then work out where it is in their mind as far as where it is unconsciously and what the real root cause is. It doesn't matter if it stops smoking. It doesn't matter if it's weight loss. It doesn't matter if it's anxiety. It's all the same thing, guys. It's all a big symptom of something. And I start in the same place every time. I know uh, people have told me that they were taught that in order to do a stop smoking session, you have to relax a client first in order to relax a client first, get the mind relaxed, and then talk about the smoking. Why? Because then they say you don't have to do that for anxiety. Why? Why is it any different? When you start categorizing problems as being different, you are now saying indirectly that some problems are symptoms and some problems are real root cause. That is not the case. You start the session in the same place. You do the therapy in the same way. Remember, smoking is a symptom. So it's no different than doing an anxiety session. You end the session in the same way. Testing, tasking, processing chat. Talked about this before in videos, guys. Again, if you want to learn how to do this, click on the link below for our next ACH training. We show you all of this stuff, guys. You, you start the session in the same way. You do the therapy in the same way. You end the session in the same way. It doesn't matter if it's smoking or something else. It is all the same thing. Hopefully, you guys can hear my point. You charge $1,500 per client, not per hour session or package. If you want to get really, really low cost clients who have a lot of issues, who won't follow along, who are very bad clients, charge $100 and tell me how much fun that was. Plus, they probably won't quit anyway, even though we know that's a symptom, but this is just the argument I'm making right now. Because low cost means low quality clients. If my client's not motivated to give me $1,500, $2,500, we even have students charging five grand for clients to quit smoking. What sort of motivation would they have in the session? Very little. Low cost clients cause a lot of big headaches for you as a hypnotherapist. Get your price up. You won't have to see as many clients, which is great, but you'll get very motivated clients and they'll quit every single time, guys. Number 10, you want to do strategy calls for each new client. It's not have them book from your website before you speak to them. You get some money in your PayPal account, then you do the session. You want to start doing the therapy on the strategy call. And again, we show you how to do this in our ACH training as well, guys. Number 11, every new client start the session from scratch. Smoking is a symptom. If I have one client at 9 a.m. and I work out root cause that the reason this client has a smoking problem is because, I always use this example, um, they were abducted by aliens when they were six. If I drag those thoughts into the next session, what am I now saying? Every client is different. So it doesn't matter if I have 10 clients in a row, I'll always start from the start. What's the problem? Tell me about it according to you, it being the problem according to you. I start the same, therapy the same, end the same. What the root cause is, there are millions of different examples of what a root cause is. That's why you can't script this stuff. That's why you don't need audios. That's why you can't prepare for these sessions ahead of time because you have no idea what your client's going to say. If I start preempting what my client's going to say and write it on a piece of paper and worry about reading the script, there's so many red flags with that. I'm now leading the session instead of listening to what my client has to say. And again, guys, here's my pitch. If you want to learn how to do this properly, just come to our ACH training. That's why ACH students are the most um, uh, sought after therapists and highly paid therapists in the industry because you can't follow the traditional way of doing hypnosis and expect it to work on the economics and the business, MOS, speed of the sessions, results, all of those sorts of things. It does not work, guys. So there's my 11 step, guys. Pretty simple. Remember, if you remember anything from this, smoking is a symptom, weight loss is a symptom, anxiety is a symptom. If you go into the session believing the symptom, it doesn't matter how good your technique or script is, you'll fail every single time, guys. So I hope that helps. This is the mindset I had for every single lawyer client I have. It's the same mindset I have for every demo we do in our ACH training and something we teach over and over again. Hopefully that helps, guys. See you in the next video. Bye for now.